Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. What do you think about that? A little Tea Time mug. Today we have a little bit of Fireside. Love that smokiness of the lap song, guys. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out. Talking photo, talking video, talking tech. Today is a Starlink day. So I guess it's a tech day. Today's kind of an interesting one because I was reading a bunch of articles of what's going on over there with Elon Musk. Starlink service. And is it getting better? Is it getting worse? What's reliability like? What is the speed like and whatnot? And I want to get into it a little bit with you and give you an idea of where Starlink is going in comparison to the competition and where is it going in comparison to terrestrial type of service, like your fiber service that you can get, or let's call it thick copper, as I call it, uh, Comcast or whatnot. So we're gonna get into this a little bit and I wanna get your thoughts before the end of this video, maybe down in the comment area. Let's have this discussion. I absolutely love what's going on over there at Starlink. I think they're doing a really great job. Is it perfect? No. Is there a lot of stuff that they need to work on? Yes, especially when it comes to customer service. I'm not a fan of customer service. They need to work on that. Anyways, let's get into some of the speeds. But before we do, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. Get them free just for being here. Go check them out. Anyways, gigabit, gigabit Starlink version 1.5, version 2.0 satellites. What is going on with them? What is also going on with their ISL or their intersatellite links or intersatellite lasers, which can possibly push the boundaries of what is currently going on? According to... Elon, just recently, a couple of days ago, and we want to talk about that. But before we get into this, I want to just tell you what is going on with the speed. Now, we all know of the internet speed testing site, speedtest.net. They're run by Ukula, I believe it is. Um, they are like the purveyor of internet speed knowledge, right? They're constantly doing speed tests from all different servers all over the country and world and gathering data. Now they don't keep any of your personal data, but what they do is they check what your IP address is and then where that IP address is associated to. For example, mine is currently in Georgia. Why that is, I don't even wanna get into it. It should be here in Miami because we have a Starlink pop right out of Miami, but for some reason I am currently attached to the pop in Georgia, which is 700 miles away in comparison to 70 miles away. Problem. Anyways. Either which way, if you look up my IP address, it is associated with Georgia, which is fine. As of right now, our tests are getting anywhere from about 100 to 180 megabits per second on the down speed. And on the up speed, we're ranging between 9 or 10 megabits up to about 20, 21 megabits up. And it really varies. Once again, this is satellite service. Even though it's LEO service, low earth orbiting satellite type of service, you have lower latency it's still a satellite service. So if there's any type of obstructions, we had a severe storm the other day and during the storm, we had no service. That's just simply how it is. And that's how it's gonna be until they get antennas that are stronger and stronger and stronger that can actually bust through those clouds. Until then, we have what we have. Now, the speeds, what Okala or Ukala has shown is that during October, November, and December, of last year, they accumulated all those, let's say 90 days of data and they made it public. And what they have found is that the Starlink service itself has actually been getting faster. This is really great in comparison to, for example, like a Viasat or a Hughes network. Now Viasat and Hughes network are sitting right around 20 to 21 megabits per second whereas we're seeing an average or a mean of Starlink of about 105 megabits per second. That is a major disparity between the two. Now, the FCC does designate broadband internet as speeds that are over 25 megabits per second. So technically, Viasat as well as Use Network aren't even considered by the FCC as broadband internet. Whereas for sure, Elon Musk Starlink is, which is about four times the speed that it needs to be. Now is once again getting faster. But what we have noticed also by this data is that the speeds vary 
by region. Down here in Florida, our average speeds are right around 200 megabits per second, whereas folks over in Oregon, for example, are right around 65 megabits. So what does that all have to do with? Is it the satellites that are the problem or is it the terrestrial issue? And I do think that it is a terrestrial issue because bear in mind, when data is requested by our Starlink, for example, if I was doing a Google search, what happens is, is the data goes from my computer to the router, to the dish, up to a satellite, from the satellite back down to a ground station. That ground station then fires it off to a pop. Now, my ground station is very close to me, but my pop once again is in Georgia, so it has to fire it off 700 miles. This is fiber, so it's going the speed of light, but there is slowdown and congestion. So once it gets to that pop, then that pop requests the data from Google. Google sends it back to the pop. The pop sends it back to the ground station. Ground station fires it back up to the satellite and the satellite fires it back down to me. As of recently, things have changed or are getting close to changing. Version 1.0 of these satellites did not have lasers on board, but versions 1.5 and 2.0 do. What does this mean? What this means is that the satellites can now communicate from satellite to satellite in comparison to having to have a ground station immediately underneath them to fire that information down to. This is a major, major difference. Major, because now Starlink will be able to keep that data in the air longer. Meaning that each one of these Starlink satellites will become like a knock, like a network operations center, where a lot of traffic will happen on the satellite itself, inter-satellite, ISL, as they call it. And if we go over to Starlink.sx, bear in mind, this is not like sanctioned by or affiliated with Starlink. So the data is more informational. Is it perfect? No, but it's pretty damn good. I've been looking at this data for quite some time and they do a really good job of putting this together. Now, let me just show you something that is interesting. Just to give you a little background of what you're seeing here, this is me down here in this little green dot. Now, each one of these purple triangles are pops or point of presence. And each one of these yellow dots, let's get in here a little tighter. There's one down here in Fort Lauderdale. There's one here in Punta Gorda. Those are ground stations. If we back up a little bit, this green triangle, it is my pop. It is the pop that I am currently associated with. That means that the IP address that I currently have is an IP address that's out of this network in Atlanta, Georgia. So if we dig in a little bit deeper here, we can see a satellite coming by me right now and supposedly it is attached to me. And as this satellite goes by, you can see it has now made a connection with Punta Gorda. That means that any data going to the satellite is going to go through this specific ground station. And as this goes by further, it will now, as you can see, now attached itself to this ground station, which is in Fort Lauderdale. We're still doing communications between this satellite and myself, but it is now going through this ground station. So this is how the system works. Now, what about if we were up here in Canada, for example, and there's no ground station besides ground stations in the US? How is Elon pushing the boundaries further out and also increasing speeds? So if we look at this, we can see that there's satellites that are going through Canada right now, and they are bouncing back to these ground stations that are in the US, that's fine. Well, what happens if we need to cover further out? Once again, pushing the boundaries, getting them further and further away from these pops. Well, what they do then is they connect satellite by satellite. We can see a satellite right here and another one right here, and there's a blue dotted line that's connecting them. If we dig in here a little bit, we can see it is a version 1.5. That means that it has lasers on board, communication lasers. So if we back out a little bit, we can see that it's also connected to a satellite right here. And this satellite is in the middle of the ocean. Now, what's great about this is there's no pop in this location, right? But if you were on a boat right about here in the middle of the ocean, you would be able to then access this satellite here. And as you can see, it says ISL linked. 
you could connect to this satellite and then this satellite would bounce that data or that request to here and then back down to this ground station. So once again, this is going to give us the ability to be further and further away from pops and also allow for there to be less pops because you don't need as many. You just need really robust pops, but the data can be then bounced from satellite to satellite to satellite at the speed of light and then down to a ground station, which is the closest ground station to that location. So this is really something major. This is really big. Now, this is the satellite that we were looking at before. Now, if we look at it now, it no longer says ISL or inter-satellite linked, right? Why is that? Because this satellite is now linked to this ground station in Alaska. And the same thing holds true with all of these. We can see that this is ISL linked, but as soon as it gets close to a ground station, probably right around this area, it will no longer say linked through ISL. The reason being is it will be then linked to this ground station right up here. So if we move out of the United States and go into Europe where there's a lot less coverage, you can see a lot of these lines, these blue lines where these satellites are connected, ISL or inter-satellite linked. What this means is if we are currently in Libya, there is a bird flying overhead, but this bird is a 1.0. What that means is it does not have lasers built on board. It is not linked. But if we look at this satellite that's coming by right now, this is a version 1.5. So if you were in Libya, for example, and there was service available in the location, you would be able to access this satellite right here and it would bounce your request all the way to a satellite up here, maybe in Spain, and then from that satellite down to this ground station right here, or this pop. As you can see, it says pop number two here. So this satellite here is connected to the satellite that's flying through Libya. So it can definitely be used. Now, is it allowed to be used? Are they using it? Well, that's a different story. As this grid grows, we're gonna see coverage in very remote areas because they're going to not need ground stations in those areas at all. They're going to bounce and relay the data from satellite to satellite to satellite, once again, at the speed of light. Now, just recently, Elon Musk said the version 2.0s are right around the corner. Now, those version 2.0s are going to be much faster than the 1.5s that are currently out there that do have lasers on board. Now, these 2.0s, according to Elon, will provide almost a full order of magnitude more capacity or capability with these satellites. That is crazy. So if right now, for example, each one of these satellites would be able to handle 100 people per satellite at any given time, we're looking at almost an order of magnitude more. So we're looking at about 1,000 people. If they can currently handle 1,000 people, you're looking at 10,000 people. So it is massive. And if speeds were also able to increase at this order of magnitude, we're looking at speeds of, let's say, a mean of what they were saying, 105 megabits per second. We're going to see gigabit transfer rates down speed. That would be absolutely unbelievable. Remember, Elon's original thought or desire with the Starlink service was gigabit service. And I think that would be absolutely amazing because we're looking at latency speeds of about 20 milliseconds to about 30, 35 milliseconds. Not bad at all because they are low or low earth orbiting satellites. They are in LEO. So I'm really excited about what's going on right now. I hope it continues at this breakneck speed. Right here in Florida, we're seeing a lot of launches happening, sometimes multiple per week, where they're launching up another 50 plus satellites. And it's really exciting because we're going to start seeing not only speeds increase, but I believe reliability also. Because once we can take those ground stations out of the loop, not totally, but a little bit, we are going to start seeing faster speeds and more reliability because you don't have as much ground congestion. Because in the air, the only congestion that you're going to get is congestion from those 1,000 people or 100 people or 10,000 people, not everybody else. So if we were to one day be able to remove ground stations out of the loop completely and just simply be able to go from my antenna to a satellite 
to another satellite, to another satellite, and then down to the pop, that's gonna be a hell of a lot faster than going from my antenna to a satellite, down to a ground station, and then on the ground to the pop. That is a lot slower than just going satellite to satellite to satellite at the speed of light. So once again, I'm excited about what's going on. What do you think? I wanna know your thoughts. In the comment area below, let's have this discussion. I think it's fascinating. And if you enjoy this content and you wanna say thank you, or if you want to contribute to the channel, or if you wanna become a member, please do so. There's a thank you button down there. There's also a join so that you can become a member. If you would like to, I would really appreciate having you here. Also, we have a community that we talk and discuss all type of tech and photo and video over on our Discord server. I'll put a link down below. If you enjoyed this content even a little bit, throw it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, as I always say, and click this little bell icon over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, share this video with other Starlink enthusiasts. Share it on Facebook or Reddit or Twitter or wherever, all right? I would really appreciate that to help grow the channel. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years, and hopefully there's something there that you might like, and if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.